Welcome everyone to the Grand Campaign 1916 this time. Let's see if we can indeed push into Germany. Ooh, Wilhelm Saven is indeed falling. Nice. So let's just continue this. It seems like World War I is kind of wrapping up, but I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to think about things as being done yet. Because who knows? Things are going really well, however, in the Ottoman Empire. Or soon to not be the Ottoman Empire. Russia, however, uh, they're having problems. And so Germany and Austria Hungary soon will have swarms of troops ready to stop our advance into their territories. Let's see if we can make them collapse before that happens. And Wilhelm Saven is still a really good attack. Um, is our air force still in the Ottoman Empire? Yes, they are. Are they still destroying? Yes, they are destroying enemy divisions by the day. Very good. So, uh, the 14th Infantry Division will go down right now as we speak, thanks to our Air Force. And that's going to be permanent damage dealt to the Ottoman forces. And oh, looks like the Ottomans also have brought up some enemy troops to stop us in a lot. But they will, of course, take damage from both our ground troops and our Air Force. And because they're just so very outnumbered, uh, it's going to be fairly easy to um, overrun them. Great War Armored Car is finished. Very good. That was in armor and artillery. So that means that we have the 1916 Armored Car available. Let's go for the 1916 Great War Field Artillery with the Fosters of Lincoln. Sure. And let's also put some armed cars into actual production. Because that uh, decreases softness. And that's a very good stat to decrease because that means that uh, essentially they will have to use the hard attack of units to damage. Well, I mean, it's only 2%, but yes. Um, because, of course, soft attack is what damages units that are very soft, whereas hard attack is what damages units that are very hard. Uh, in World War I, you don't really have a lot of hard units, however. So even just a slight increase of soft softness, or slight decreased softness, is a good uh, is a good stat to get. Time for more war games, of course says Spain. So we're still also fighting in the air in Germany. We have taken Gaza, actually. Let's try to advance towards Tel Aviv. It might not work. No, it probably won't. They have a cavalry division and an infantry division there, although we appear to be winning, which is really nice. Oh, they just brought in tons of troops. Or I'm guessing that they were the troops that were retreating from Gaza. Anyway, uh, so... They're attacking us in Frankfurt from multiple sides, and it appears like it's a big stalemate. We have one in Wilhelmshaven, and their fleet has been forced to uh, escape Wilhelmshaven, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Let's also send the Grand Fleet. Um, I will leave behind some ships, though, from the Grand Fleet. So that I can continue the blockade to help in the naval battle against the uh, German Hochse Flotte, which is now retreating out of Wilhelmshaven, which is now under our hands. So things aren't, go aren't going exactly the way we should be wanting them to go, but in a few hours the rest of our fleet will reach the Heligoland Bay. No, we won regardless, and they're retreating to, I think, Bremen. So they have managed to escape. We've lost nine battleships, and they've lost... Well, they've lost a lot of destroyers, three battleships. Overall, of course, we can replace these losses more than they can, but still, it's not good to lose so many ships at once. I will reorganize my fleets and get them repaired because I don't really want the next battle to destroy me quite as much. 
Looks like most of our damage ships are uh, escorts. Probably because all of our capital ships that got damaged were uh, mostly sunk. Pull in Force H. I can, I think, send them out. Yeah, I'm gonna send them out to reinforce the fleet in the Frisian Islands. Some more fighter groups. Very good. And I don't think we can still advance from Wilhelmshaven. Let's try to hold Frankfurt, which should be easy thanks to the support of the French. Okay, so I've got the fleet here. Uh, I guess an admiral is fine to command 12 ships. In the meantime, the main force is really going to be the Grand Fleet under Jellico. And um, they've got the enemy ships kind of locked up in Bremen, which is really good. And our troops uh, need a little bit of replenishing, so let's pull in some reinforcements and some upgrades as well. There we go. Because now that they aren't engaged in combat, then they can both receive reinforcements and upgrades. Okay. So we still have these transports here. Ooh. Um, all right, we were fighting those partisans, those Senussi. And they're attacking us in Wilhelmshaven. How dare they? It seems like they aren't winning. Let's, um, let's do shore bombardment just to help. Shore bombardment does minus 14. Oh, that's like half a river crossing. That's really good. Oh, unlimited submarine warfare. The Kaiser th stated today that his submarines will attack any ship heading towards or coming from England, even those from neutral nations, who may suffer a lot from such a decision. And ooh, minus 20% war stockpiles. Sweden, Norway, Spain, Portugal, and the United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina enforce a trade embargo on us because they cannot trade with us. And our national descent increases. That's really bad. That is actually really crippling. As you can see, we had a lot of trade agreements going with those countries. We had a lot of trade agreements with those countries, and losing the supplies that were coming in from them is going to be a harsh blow to our industry, because we might be starting to run out of certain materials that we don't want to run out of. Also, we are starting to run out of convoys, it would seem. We only have 100 convoys left. So I think we should also produce some convoys. Because we don't, really do not want to drop below something like 200 convoys. It seems like some of our ships are getting sunk. Um, I don't... well, do I see... do I have statistics over sunk convoys? I'm pretty certain that we do. Maybe taking losses in naval? Transports, escorts. Yeah, we lost 32 transports, although the Germans have lost much more. 633 convoys. So that's very bad. For them. So I guess that their transport fleet is essentially gone, and they might be also running out of materials in general. Uh, not yet. They are running out of oil, though. They've only got 3,442. Of course, oil. Oh, they're really low on supplies. Three thousand five hundred. Of course, oil in World War One isn't quite as crucial as in World War Two, but it's still important to sail fleets and air. air of course, um, fly aircraft. That's not something that you want to. Oh, more troops in a lot. That's exactly what we want. Inflicting more losses on the Ottomans is very nice. And we have the 3rd Cavalry Division, should be able to push in. The Sierra Leone force should go to Gaza. And it looks like the French are attacking in Tel Aviv, so let's help them out. And ooh, it's going really well. Very nice. Uh, because they pulled in all of their troops that were in Tel Aviv, I think they're sending them to Eilat. Uh, which isn't a good idea for them, because they're going to be losing in Eilat anyway. So we're going to take Tel Aviv. Blantyre? Oh, 
Sure. If that's what you think. Now, how are things going in Germany? Looks like we haven't been able to repel those attacks into Frankfurt. And Wilhelmshaven should be able to hold. I mean, they still have that river crossing to deal with. Although the attackers are making a decent amount of progress. Ooh, left. So we get bombers as well. Oh no, that's a division. East Lancashire. Okay. Okay, we have, so we finally won. And they've decided to retreat. Good. Good, good, good. So I think that next objective might be Bremen, although Kassel doesn't have river crossings from Bielefeld and Frankfurt. So once my troops are rebuilt, and it looks like they're basically rebuilt already, we can try an offensive like that. Let's see, when Dom breaks, attack. I'm gonna also try to pull in the cavalry to help out. They've only got five divisions there, so I think we should be able to punch through. Indeed, we also got a breakthrough combat event, so we have a very, very good chance of smashing through them very quickly, which is what we want to see. Uh, we're also losing money, which is annoying. Well, losing money. We're low on money in general. And ooh, Tel Aviv has been reinforced, so stop attacking there. In the meantime, a lot is just a manpower sink for the Ottoman Empire. They're just losing troops left and right. Look at those troops. They're just so very damaged. And uh, these air wings have interesting names. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, are we getting our air bases in Elabrish? Yes, we are. Soon we'll have one of these air bases complete. In fact, we should also build some infrastructure there so that the air bases can be built faster. Okay. And there we go, finally. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that these men are... Uh, I guess it can support the attack. Just to make it go a little bit faster. So we have finally managed to take a lot. And now our air force is pounding the troops that are retreating. At the same time though, I think we could expand our offensive into Jerusalem. And try that. It would be a frontal attack, but... Hey, let's try. It might bring in more enemy troops. It looks like Jerusalem somehow has some fortifications as well. So the Ottomans very, very heavily fortifying basically everything here. I wonder if we could do the Balfour Declaration. That's very weird that we haven't gotten that. Uh, the cavalry, once it gets there, I think they'll try to go to al Kabak Along with the Egyptian battalions. And then the Scottish division will go ahead and go to uh, Jerusalem. Okay, so now we can also upgrade those divisions a little bit more. Okay, so castle was secured. Sort of. We're trying to move in. The French are getting attacked, but I think they have enough troops in the area to stay uh, in control of Darmstadt. More games. And we have repulsed them in Jerusalem. Very good. But they've brought in more troops, a cavalry division to reinforce. A 1907 cavalry division will have a very hard time against our infantry, though. So that's not bad. Looks like in the meantime, Basra is still surrounded by our... Oh, shit. That's not good. It is, in fact, the Raj that is surrounded by the Ottomans. And the Raj's troops are starting to run out of organization. And once they do, although at least the 5th uh, Indian Corps in An-Najaf has um, pretty heavy 
organization still left, so they can probably punch through Basra and uh, maybe try to reach friendly lines in Husher in Persia. Also getting interceptor upgrades. Very good. And that's a very, very cool architecture. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between the Interceptor Fighter 3 and the Interceptor Fighter 2 will be. Uh, these are Interceptors 3. You know, um, doesn't show. Probably a range. Maybe uh, the defensiveness. Okay, we're still taking out the last remaining Ottomans that are retreating out of Eilat. And there they go. Uh, so let's ground attack into Jerusalem. There we go. We've also got the new air, new air wing. There we go. So we're also managing to get some damage done on them. And we're also sinking the Germany convoys that are trying to bring in supplies for them. And Alcarok, huh. How close are you to upgrading? Eh, still very far. Let's try to punch through. But I don't have uh, very good hopes for that. Try to counterattack in Hanover. Oh yeah, working pretty well. Working pretty well indeed. Uh, they're trying to attack us in Castle, but uh, we're having our infantry march in, and they should be able to help along with the counterattack in Hanover, because they're attacking from both Erfurt and Hanover. So if we can take Hanover, then that's gonna be nice. And ooh! So, Russia invade Galicia and Romania joined the war because of that. That was Russia's offensive shit, though, and. Yeah, the main sort of lands that the Russian Empire calls theirs are falling. Except, in the south, at least they're doing really well. Um, Romania joining the war is good because it looks like. Both Bulgaria and Austria-Hungary do have some uh, sort of weak spots in their line. And it's also going to be some good help to Serbia, uh, relieving pressure out of them. They might even be able to mount an offensive to retake Belgrade, but who knows. Royal Sovereign. All these British names. How are things going here? So the Northumbrians are finally starting to suppress these partisans. So we have one in Castle, and we have one in Jerusalem as well. Very nice. And we're now trying to advance. We've got some pretty huge air forces from both us and Portugal, interestingly enough. Bombing the Ottoman Empire's troops in the area. Okay, things overall seem to be going well pretty much everywhere. And Haig got Hills Fighter. Where is he? Oh, he is down here. So he's got skill 6, Offensive Doctrine, Desert Fox, and Hills Fighter. So he's providing us with some extremely good, uh, extremely good bonuses. So we have plus 10 from his Offensive Doctrine. Then... Well, this is a hill, right? So we should also be gaining a pretty hefty bonus from that. Or, well, we're getting minus 31 instead of more than that from the hills. So, um, we're stimming the penalty, essentially. And then leadership plus 19, which is from his uh, skill 6. So, some very good bonuses overall from our general. And these long, drawn-out World War I battles is pretty much the perfect way of... Um, 
pretty much the perfect way of pulling in traits for your leaders. So that's something that's good. Okay, so we got a medical tech, blood transfusions. I think that was in here, medicine. Uh, that's gonna be quite a long time away, so we could go for the improved Great War hospital system. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good decision. Let's put that on Henry Rawlinson. In the meantime, we're also getting defensive attrition from Mr. Haig. And eh, it looks like we're losing in Hanover, actually. But we've got support coming in from Castle. Let's see if this addition can revitalize the assault. Hmm. Yeah, seems like it's going. And also the constitutional protection movement seems to be growing in China. Against the Beiyang clique. Alcroc still has five enemy divisions. Wow, that's a lot. So let's stop that attack because, yeah, we're taking pretty huge casualties into there. It looks like the French are attacking into Tel Aviv, so let's help them out with our forces there. So our advance through Palestine is pretty much working out as intended. And, okay. So we have managed to send them packing in Jerusalem. Now we've got an early seaplane, let's put it on one of our battleships. There we go. Uh, if we go ahead and go and look at what, the, what that does in Force F, that uh, should increase the spotting. Uh, the sea detection capability. So 2-2-2 two, two, two for you. 111 for you. So it is going to make uh, life for our ships easier when the enemy is trying to sort of evade us in a big sea zone. Later on, the seaplanes will also provide damages to, uh, damages, bonuses to the attack rating of ships, and sometimes the firing range of ships as well because of the spawning capabilities that seaplanes provided. They were essentially artillery spotters, uh, giving adjustments to the range and uh, parameters that, of course... Ooh! So big... big Chinese. So we could intervene in the Constitutional Protection War. The Guangzhou government and the Beiyang government of China have gone to war. Should we intervene on one side? So we could either support the Beiyang or the Constitutional Protection Movement, the Guangzhou government. Now, uh... Let's try to support the Guangzhou government. Because we already have good relations with Beiyang China, so... Helping out the CPM might be a good decision, especially if they end up winning, which they should. Let's move in our cavalry. Oh, actually we can move in the cavalry into Tel Aviv, which should be a quick way to advance there, although a year. Uh, a secret project has borne fruit. Automotive contractors in the land ships committee have joined forces and the project manager has pre present presented the theoretical results to the general staff. It is believed that further research can lead to a series of armored fighting vehicles. So we have the experimental tank tech. Uh, this is of course 1916 when, indeed, the Brits first experimented with the landship prototypes. And once 1916 Infantry Division is finished, which is going to be soon, I will indeed try to bring in some research for experimental tanks and experimental heavy tanks so that I can equip some of my forces with armor. Because, of course, that's exactly what we want to do. To punch through enemy lines, that's gonna be one good way. Uh, we're also, we should also be getting some artillery soon. Uh, 6%, oh, that's gonna be a long time. So we need up until July, and then some of our artillery will be coming in to the battlefield. So it's gonna, it's gonna take a long, long time. Uh, at least our ships are mostly complete. Our ship program. Mm. 
And then after that is finished, we are going to be looking at uh, getting some Queen Elizabeth class battleships online. And ooh, we could get an escort carrier. The Empress class, aka mostly just a seaplane tender at this point. We could try that out. Hmm. It does have some really good sea detection capabilities. What about... Oh yeah. yeah, 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 because of the scouting. So it would be a very good addition to our fleets. Let's just pull in four of those once we have the industrial capacity. It's no priority, but they're very cheap at .09, and they're going to be useful. And Japan stayed neutral in the Constitutional Protection War, which is very interesting considering Japan should be one to really intervene in China. You can also, uh, you also have some artillery already, but I'm not sure where those divisions are that could be receiving artillery. 5th Infantry Division, oh, in the Irish Command, Irish Command, Northern Command, yes, indeed. So all of these are forces that are kind of Trier. Castle. Really? You can put artillery on divisions that are fighting? Oh, I I didn't realize that it had these divisions, right? I am sometimes not very smart. Okay. So let's equip them. That's going to not decrease their maximum speed. Because it's already at 1. So it's already at the worst. And oh, an I oh, they're supporting an Irish uprising? Really? And of course, the ship that they were trying to send arms to the Irish in was intercepted by us. But that's still increasing the revolt risk in Ireland by quite a bit. Except in the areas in the northeast, of course, in Ulster, where the loyalists are. So these are considered our national provinces, but the south isn't. And we still have some cavalry ready. We could launch them when the time is right. And the French are also joining our assault on Hanover with mighty force. So that's good. I will put the armored cars on my cavalry divisions because it just makes sense. And also because if you put artillery on your cavalry, you decrease their speed. And so the best way to improve their attack would be to put armed cars on them. And let's try to research this experimental heavy tank. Uh, Leyland Motors is the best one to research the heavy tanks. Let's do that landship project. Uh, it's going to take a while. But it's going to be worth it. <laughs> you lucky people. What? Yeah, these names are something else. I know, not the RAF fire group. Madam 10 and you lucky people are now going to be coming into El Arish. Is there any revolt risk in El Arish? No, there isn't. Very, very nice. That's something that we want to avoid as much as possible. And ooh, we've got a lot of upgrades to do because that was Infantry 1916. And that's essentially most of our army that we need to upgrade. So we have defeated them in Hanover. Let's try to use the cavalry to break through. While we view what's going on with the combats, looks like Tel Aviv was a breakthrough. We're now coming in as well. Okay. And it looks like we have finally defeated that uh, German Southeast Africa regiment. So can I use these two divisions north into the Ottoman Empire? Finally. We've also got the Nigeria regiment that can go in. So let's do some strategic redeployment. And do that. That's the end of the part uh, with the very annoying clock. I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the grand campaign. 
and I'll see you soon.